And welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange-traded funds. I'm Bob Pisani, joined today by Tom Lydon of ETFTrends.com and Kristen Magoon of Amplify ETFs. Let's kick off things with the markets rallying today after President Trump announced a deal with Mexico to avoid tariffs. S&P 500 now within 2% of its all-time high, crossing 2,900. Psychologically important mark there, but the rally doesn't stop here in the U.S., Check out the Mexico ETFs. <laughs> Look at this soaring on the deal. The popular iShares EWW ETF, that's all Mexico, is up more than 3%. President Trump boasting about this deal on CNBC earlier today, saying he expects a similar outcome with China. So what does this mean for the markets? Uh, uh, Tom, I, I guess it's good news, obviously, for Mexico. We see those stocks uh, moving to the upside, but it's been a rocky road for emerging markets. It has year. been. And, however, seeing some positive news is, is great. Valuations, and we talked earlier about stocks being now with this rebound in the U.S. a little bit richer. Valuations, especially in Mexico, P is around 12 compared to 17 or 18 here in the U.S. So if you feel like but historically it's been a discount, Mexico has been a lower multiple, right? It, it surely has. But the thing is, emerging markets have been so underperformed in the last five years. The question is, are they going to come back? And all emerging markets yeah. aren't created equal. No. And part of the problem, Christian, is they get influenced by our market. So right. uh, they're influenced by our interest rates. Generally, lower is better. Mm -hmm. And they're influenced by our dollar. Generally, lower uh, is better. So what do you right. what do you do in this situation? Well, I think it's a very interesting conundrum because, you know, you're kind of betting on President Trump's mood. Uh, is he going to be harsher in this tariff uh, negotiations? We saw him loosen up with Mexico. Does that mean what is he going to do for China going forward? Pro I don't know. I think that he's probably going to continue to gain strength here in his uh, dialogue with China and maybe be harsh, and that would be another downturn. The one thing, though, that's good for emerging markets is oil has kind of come off highs, and that tends to be a good thing for emerging markets in the long term. Yeah, emerging markets is something people keep arguing about where the weighting should be in your portfolio. I typically hear... 5% or so, but it's been tough in the last year, just generically. I, I mean, do you still maintain that kind of faith that you should have a certain portion of your portfolio in emerging markets when you have these, not macro headwinds, geopolitical headwinds in the form of President Trump smacking everything around, moving, moving these markets? Well, for the last 10 years, we've had a home country bias here in the U.S., but still 55% of global capitalization is outside of the U.S., so this 10 years, if you, if you look back, there's some periods of time when emerging markets did very, very well. And from a valuation standpoint, they're solid. The key is you need to go in and kind of pick the spots that are going to be the best. Right now, do we have confidence investing in Brazil versus uh, Mexico? Probably not. There's some other at Russia. Probably yeah. not. China, on the China trade, if they actually get a deal, we're going to see that pop. So, Christian, it, it makes sense to me. If 55 percent of, did you say, capital formation, Tom, is outside the U.S. these days, then from a portfolio adjustment standpoint, it certainly makes sense to have 5 percent. I know we picked that number 10 years ago. We still yeah. hang on to it. But yeah. that makes some sense to me. I don't see any reason to move that around just because we have some geopolitical issues around President Trump. I agree. I think you need to have discipline to own emerging markets demographics are on their side. They're a lot younger than developed nations like the U.S., and the growth rates are there. Uh, but you have to hold for the long term, and it's been difficult the last few years. I want to point out, if you look at the uh, EWW, which is the iShare Mexico ETF, they have Walmart Mexico, which trades separately. Yeah. They have Kimberly Clark Mexico that trades separately. Uh, Banco Santander Mexico that trades separately. Yeah. There's a whole little universe. Here's some of the, the start. There's Walmart there. Look, uh, Grupo Mexico that, that exists parallel in, in Mexico to the United States e economy. So yeah. uh, my point here to bring this up is that it shows you that Mexico is really not a developed, still emerging market maybe, but certainly moving along very well. It's got its own parallel infrastructure and retail system. Yeah, and there's one other factor, which is currency, Bob. I mean, uh, you look at companies like uh, Wisdom Tree. They built their business on currency hedging. And there's an iShares currency hedge ETF for Mexico, where if you feel, hey, we're going to have lower interest rates in the U.S. and we've got strength in uh, the markets in Mexico, right. we might see the peso move stronger. So point. there's an option. Investing in foreign countries, you're always carrying that currency right. risk and you can hedge that out under certain circumstances.